This is a rice exchange. Now, the big daddy bailout of the Buhari's administration and the largesse of monthly federal allocations sharing for state governments may be winding down gradually. The State Oil Corporation, or the NNPC, has said that it will make no contribution into the FAC account for the month of May, while the federal government has notified the subnationals or state governments that the deductions of previous bailouts from their monthly allocations is set to resume. Now let's chat now to this development and we'll bring on the show Olusha Onigude, director and co-founder of Budget International. A good evening to you, sir, and thanks for coming on the program. It's a pleasure, Minya Boss. Thank this you. This is the first time, at least in Nigeria's history, that the NNPC has written the Accountant General indicating there will be no crude oil inflow into the Federation account for the monthly fact sharing for April. What's your view about this development? Yeah, it's a worrisome trend, but it's un not unexpected. Um, this has been a situation that um, in recent times, um, as oil prices um, rise globally, then definitely subsidy uh, payments is also going to rise in the corresponding manner. Um, the, the NMPC has uh, always been the major importer of uh, processed crude, um, and they had defrayed that cost from the um, crude allocation to them around 45,000 barrels. So NMPC gets the allocation, which is meant actually for the domestic refinery. And part of that cost is what they have used in the past to pay for subsidy. And I think NMPC has just been honest to say um, state governments can't eat their cake and have it. Um, they are going to take all the subsidy payments, uh, or what they call on their recovery, from the, from, the, from the allocation that is due to the federal government. And they are even going to backdate that to the previous payment that they had not charged. So um, it's an NPC trying to run like a decent commercial company. Um, and I think the state government, the federal government, and all of the entities just need to face their reality. Uh, we have been on this road before when we talk around full subsidy um, and why it is having a very, very dilapidating effect on Nigerian finances. And then, as you are aware, I mean, the, the devaluation of currency of Naira has not made that an easy situation because when you were even converting at 280, maybe 300, now you have conversions around 420 dollar and it could be much more higher for private marketers that are sourcing from the parallel exchange. So it's a problem that we are coming to face that uh, as we go along the way, oil prices um, as rising, subsidy prices will also rise. And there was a bit of um, extra fun in the last uh, sharing, because it was acknowledged that states and the federal government have this gentleman or gentle lady agreement um, to have only 650 billion naira uh, disbursed on a monthly basis. Um, so we will see how that works um, because it's not going to possibly not going to be up to 650 billion. Yes. But I think they made some savings last year, uh, last month from the fact distribution. Uh, but, but, but do you think this is the Buhari's administration's tactical way of telling the subnationals that the honeymoon of free money sharing is over? Yeah, to be fair, I mean, the Buhari administration has done a lot for the subnationals. Um, but I was also worried about that because. Um, you remember that there was a Paris um, debt refund that has been significant. There's been refund for road repairs. I mean, River State got 74 billion naira. Um, so the CBN and the federal government, in some sort of way, have been tactically just printing money for the state government. I think the um, the CBN governor even uh, acknowledged that recently. So it's been there. But the honeymoon is over. You need to balance the books. Um, the CBN can't keep hanging. Uh, can't keep this debt on his balance sheet continuously. He has to, there has to be a way out. But what I worry more is that we are bailing out states for consumption purposes. I mean, uh, we are telling states just, we're bailing you out to pay salaries, bailing you out to pay riots. The big question is in the room is, how do you make state governments more productive? That's the only way out. If states are not able to bring private businesses into the environment, make sure that they provide the environment to stimulate growth, make sure that they are able to have the capacity to take efficiently um, to take taxes. Um, we, can, we will just continue to have this um, circus um, continuously forever until we can no longer do it. As we can see, um, we're facing threats of um, rising price of, of crude, and which also leads to rise of, rise of subsidy. Um, definitely also non-oil revenue is not growing uh, as it did in the past years. So we are going to have challenges. And also the value of money um, has also, also been reducing significantly. 
significantly so, so when we, due to when inflation. We, when we talk about the fiscal sustainability of states, uh, we'll get to that in just about a minute very quickly within the time we have. The government has also told all the state governments that their deductions from previous bailout monies will, uh, will continue. Do you support this move that the federal government should uh, now continue? You know, remember, the state governments begged off sometime in 2019 that the Minister of Finance should stop those deductions. The, about 120 billion was deducted. Uh, several hundreds of billion was still outstanding. I, I mean, I support it. You have to take responsibility at the point uh, as a state government. You have to face the fact that there would not be continuous free lunch. Um, a lot of state times, the federal government has padded um, the books of the state by supporting them you know, in, a, in, a, in an unbelievable manner. Somehow they have to start drawing down and start paying responsibility. And, um, and this is where efficiency has to kick in. Um, reforms that could, that could engender efficiency. This is when the state government has to face that. This is when you tighten your wage bill. This is when you streamline your overhead costs. This is when you make sure that your contracting process is sanitized so that it delivers value for money. This is also the time where you also put efficiencies in your revenue collection capacity. This is the time for you to engineer growth by attracting private sector capital. Uh, if state governments are not able to do this and they are fixated on regular monthly uh, fund revenue sharing that happens at fact, then definitely there's no basis for me for existence. So I think at the point, um, state government have to start taking responsibility. It's challenging that they're going to take that at this time where we're just going through a recovery, I mean, in terms of COVID-19. But I think um, if there's a minute, if there's a graduated manner that the CBN can do this um, so that they don't, the, the effect is not significant um, on the finances. But I think it's time to start taking responsibility. Uh, you, the Budget International has done uh, quite a whole lot in recent times in terms of the state of the states. Mm -hmm. How critical is fiscal responsibility and fiscal sustainability at subnational levels? This has also been mentioned by a few international organizations, such as the World Bank, about the fiscal state of the subnationals. I mean, we, we've done for the last five years, we had this annual ranking and analysis of state and financials. And we've always said that uh, the current constitution of states in Nigeria does not facilitate production. Um, it's just not, ex productivity is not part of the, you know, the way we are seeing states. Um, I mean, I many states even have IGR more than 100 billion. I mean, let's just restate. Um, and it's a problem um, that the federal government has to sit down. How do state generate revenue? Something that is very clear is that um, Nigeria is not just the federal government. It's a summation of 36 states and the FCT that makes the whole of Nigeria. So if there is no growth, there is no development that we will seek in Nigeria um, without the states not even doing the basics or not doing the right thing. Um, what we have seen, and I think um, in, in the last um, segment, you will see the, um, the debt management uh, office chief, um, Mrs. Patricia O'Neill, she was saying around how debt sustainability has to be a key metric for state um, debt management because a whole lot of states are on bonding themselves, are bonding themselves with huge uh, liabilities and contingent liabilities that would have effect in the long run. What we need to do at this point is to have a conversation that how do we make states productive and how do we strengthen the institutions that could actually um, generate more taxes or institutions that would also be able to um, ensure efficiency in, the man in public sector management. It's as simple as that. Contracts have to be much more efficient. So this is time to embrace open contracting. This is the time to also ensure that revenue is streamlined. This is also time to grow the economy. Because we all talk about revenue um, as a big problem, why we can't we can do this. But revenue is a consequence of poor development. We have too many poor people. And when you, when you are taxing zero, all you are going to get at the end of the day is zero. We need to find a way to engender shared growth in Nigeria. And that's our only way out of being able to optimize revenue. There are leakages, there's there are evasion, there are, there are avoidance situations. But at the end of the day, we have over 80 million poor Nigerians. It's a fact. And we will not be able to raise taxes from that growth. Olusha well, Wadibi, the director and co-founder at Budget International. We appreciate your time on the show this evening. It's a pleasure. Thank you.